Hello everyone, uh, this is a talk on branch nor signature and signed LGML encryption in the algebraic group model. Uh, I'm Antoine Plouvier and this is a joint work we did with Georg Fuschbauer and Yannick Sora. Um, in this work, I will focus on the branch nor part of the paper and the algebraic group model. So first, I want to introduce uh, the idealized models. Uh, I will talk about generic group model and uh, I will uh, also introduce the algebraic group models that we use in the paper to do all the proofs. Then I will talk about Schnorr signatures. Uh, I will introduce the scheme and we will see how we can prove unforgeability of the scheme in the algebraic group model. Um, so this will give a flavor of all the proofs that we do in the paper. Um, then uh, I will uh, introduce blind Schnorr signatures. So I will uh, introduce the scheme and we will see how we can attack with the Ross problem um, with uh, those signatures. Um, and uh, this will give, this will lead to the first result of our paper. Um, finally, uh, I will talk about close, bla close uh, Blanche Nor signatures. So I will uh, talk about the scheme and we will see the second result of the paper. Okay, so <laughs> I don't know if you see, but my slides are here. So when I look here, that's just that I point with my pen, uh, with uh, uh, just I point my pen on the slide. Okay. Um, so first, let's uh, start with idealized model. So this is the generic group model. Um, okay, so generic group model uh, works with uh, group G of order P, which is a cyclic group, and usually we use this uh, model in security notions where uh, an, in a game an, ad, an adversary will interact with a challenger and the challenger may uh, give as input some group elements to the adversary. Um, what happens in the generic group model is that the adversary doesn't uh, see the group elements. So what the challenger does is it hides the group elements behind symbols and um, the challenger uh, has a list of symbols corresponding to uh, the group elements, okay? So uh, now the adversary cannot do easy computations with the symbol, it cannot do any computation at all, but it can ask for the challenger to do the computations for him. So, uh, for example, if the adversary asks for a simple addition uh, to the challenger, the challenger will, gives, will give him uh, an answer, so if the sum has already been computed, then uh, it will output a symbol that the adversary has already seen. If not, uh, it will create a new symbol. Um, in the end, the adversary may output a group element, which means that the adversary outputs a symbol and the challenger is able to find in the list which symbol, uh, where, where was the symbol, so it can get from there the decomposition that the adversary used to create this symbol, okay? So this will be a decomposition depending on the input that the uh, challenger gave. Um, so that's, uh, that's how works the generic group model. Let's see what is the difference with the algebraic group model. So the algebraic group model was designed by uh, Fuschbauer Kills and uh, Loss in uh, 2018, and uh, this uh, model works with uh, an adversary and a challenger also. The challenger gives as input some group elements, but now in the algebraic group model, the adversary will see uh, the actual group element, okay? But um, when outputting a group element, uh, we consider that the adversary is uh, algebraic. So how uh, we usually formalize it is uh, we say that the challenger has access to an extractor algorithm which uh, extracts from the adversary the decomposition that the adversary used to compute the group element. Okay? But what we want to do in the algebraic group model is we want to get rid of the extractor and to do that we will say that in the algebraic group model each time an adversary outputs an element y, it will also output a vector alpha, which gives uh, the decomposition that the adversary used to compute y. So um, 
This gives the decomposition, depending on the input, of y at the moment that the adversary computed uh, y. Okay? So we don't need an extractor anymore in our proof. <coughs> so uh, what I want to say also is the fact that um, standard model stands in between uh, the stand uh, sorry IgM stands in between the standard model and the generic group model, uh, meaning that if a property holds in the standard model, it will hold in the algebraic group model, and if a property holds in the algebraic group model, it will hold in the generic group model. Okay, let's introduce now uh, Schnorr signatures. So I first want to talk about Schnorr identification. So this is the simplest Schnorr protocol. And in this protocol, you have one user and one prover. This is in a group J of order P with a uh, capital J being a generator of the group. And uh, the prover has a secret, has a secret X that he wants to prove the knowledge of to the user. A capital X is a public key, uh, which is uh, computed uh, as this with the secret. And uh, the prover uh, picks a random R and it will send R to the user. Then uh, the user will pick a uh, random C, which is a challenge, and send the challenge to the, to the prover. And the prover will build this answer, S, and give it to the user. Then the user can uh, verify that the prover knows a small x by using this computation. Uh, this is the verification equation, okay? Um, so let's see how we can transform uh, this protocol into a signature protocol. So uh, we don't need a user anymore, and now the prover becomes a signer who wants to sign on the message M. And what we do is uh, the signer will compute it its own challenge by using a hash function so C will become uh, the um, hash of R and M. So using a random oracle, we can prove security of this signature scheme. And uh, in the end, the signature will be the pair RS. OK, the verification equation is the same. So if we see uh, the message M and the signature, we can use the verification equation here using the S of the signature, the R of the signature, and the C here using the computation of the hash with R and M. Okay, so let's see how we can prove the inforgeability of this in the algebraic group model. So the inforgeability, the inforgeability notion we look at is the existing unforgeability among chosen message attack. Uh, I just copied the verification equation here so we can keep it in mind. Um, so what uh, so what uh, the adversary does in this uh, unforgeability game is uh, it has access to the random oracle and it has also access to a signature oracle, which means it can see as many valid signatures as he wants. And uh, it has uh, as input uh, capital J, generator of the group, and capital X. It outputs a message M star and a valid signature on the message. So the proof will stand in two points. First, we want to solve the discrete log of x. So if we want to solve the discrete log for x, we don't know the secret x. But we still need to simulate the signature oracle to the adversary. So what we need to do is to simulate signature query, query without uh, knowing the secret x. So that's the first thing we should prove. Can we simulate valid signature query? So if uh, the adversary wants a signature on M, what we do is we generate a random C and S, and uh, we create R using the ver verification equation. Okay. Uh, now, for the for the signature to be valid, we only need to program the random oracle so that uh, the hash of R M will be equal to C, and that's something we can do for a challenger because. Uh, we program every algorithm that uh, the adversary has access to. So we can program, um, we can program the, the random oracle and we can program the signature or oracle. That's what we are doing here. Okay. <coughs> so, and in the end, we uh, output the valid signature and the adversary uh, can only see that it is a valid signature. Uh, now, let's see how we solve the discrete log for X. So first, uh, we say that um, the adversary outputs a valid signature, which means that the verification equation holds for this signature. 
And then remember that we are in the algebraic group model. So this means that uh, the group element R star uh, has a decomposition uh, depending on uh, the input that the adversary received. Okay. So this means that uh, the adversary built R star um, using G and X and gamma and Xi. Okay. So remember that Xi and gamma were uh, computed uh, in the same time R star was computed. Okay. It was done uh, simultaneously, simultaneously. Okay. Xi uh, is defined at the same time R star is defined. So now we can regroup the two equations and see that um, if C star plus Xi is non-equal to zero, then we can solve the discrete log for X. We can divide here. <coughs> um, so let's look at the probability that this is equal to zero. So uh, now uh, remember that uh, C star uh, is defined as the hash of R star M. This means that uh, C star is defined after R star is defined. So remember that Xi here was defined at the same time R star is defined. Okay. So this means that Xi is fixed uh, when we define C star and C star is, uh, is random because of the oracle, uh, random oracle model. So this means that uh, the probability that C star is equal to minus Xi, which is fixed, is 1 over p. So this is negligible probability and with high probability we solve the discrete log for x. This is the value for uh, the secret x. And uh, we just show that we've got a tight proof uh, for unforgeability of uh, Schnorr signature. <laughs> so uh, now let's have a look uh, to Blanche Schnorr signature. So first I want to introduce uh, Blanche signatures protocol in general. So in general, we've got a signer who has a secret key and a user who wants a signature on message M. And after a few interactions, the user will get a signature on its message. Um, the properties we want to uh, to validate in uh, Blanche signatures are the two main properties are blindness. <laughs> so in blindness, the, uh, the, to validate blindness, the signer uh, cannot link a, a pair signature message to the signing session. Okay, this is blindness. And unforgeability. So unforgeability is after L signing sessions, no user can obtain L plus one valid signatures. <laughs> so let's see how we can transform Schnorr signatures into blind Schnorr signatures. So uh, first, the user comes back and uh, the user wants a, a signature on message M and the signer has a secret X. So, um, first thing uh, we notice is that uh, the signature here it has R and S inside, but the signer knows R, okay, it creates R. So the first thing the user needs to do is to blind R so that the signer won't recognize R in the signature. So what the user does is it picks alpha and beta and builds R prime, which is equal to R plus alpha J plus beta X. And it builds C prime, which is equal to the hash of R prime M. Um, then it builds C, which is equal to uh, C prime plus beta because the user doesn't want to send C prime to the signer. It wants to send a randomization of C prime. So it sends C, which is a randomization of C prime. Um, then the signer does the same thing and send S to the user, but the user doesn't want S to be in the signature, so it does the same thing. It randomizes S in S prime, so S prime becomes S plus alpha, and the signature in the end is R prime S prime. Uh, the verification equation for the user is the same because the signer didn't change his behavior, uh, but for um, the new signature, we will see that the verification equation still holds. So let's replace S by its value. So S becomes S prime minus alpha, R becomes R prime minus alpha minus beta X, and C becomes S C prime plus beta. And uh, we can see that all elements depending on uh, alpha and beta cancel out. So in the end, we get the same verification equation uh, for the new signature, which is great. Okay. So, uh, let's see how we can attack this scheme on unforgeability. 
with the ROS problem. So what the user does uh, in that attack is first he starts uh, L interactions with the signer in parallel. Okay, it doesn't give the C, but it makes the signer wait, and it starts by asking L R for from the signer. Okay, so when it uh, has the L values for R, what the user does is it builds the coefficients cj and rho ij with j between 1 and l and i between 1 and l plus 1 and those coefficients they must be the solution of l plus 1 uh, of a system of l plus 1 linear equations which are those okay and so there is one equation for each uh, value of i and when, so this is a theoretical attack that was designed by Schnorr in 2001. And so if, uh, theoretically, uh, the user, um, gets those coefficients, then it can send them back to the signer and the signer will give the answer, um, to the user and the user will get L valid signature here. Okay. Now what the user will want to do is to build L plus one uh, valid signatures. So what the user does is it builds ri star here, uh, being uh, the linear um, linearly dependent of the rj here. So it's the sum of the rho ij rj. And uh, we can see that we got ri star that appears here. So we uh, already got ci star being the hash of ri star being uh, the same linear decomposition of the cj. So let's do the same for the si star. And uh, we've got now L plus one signature. So let's see if they are valid or not. So this is the verification uh, equation. Uh, let's start with R i star plus C i star X. So we replace R i star by its value and C i star by its value. And then we remember that uh, R j are part of valid signature. So if we use the verification equation here, um, now we can see that all uh, elements depending on x cancel out, and in the end we guess exact we get exactly the value s i star. Okay, so this makes a valid verification, and the the signatures are valid. So uh, there is one uh, signature for each value of i. So we've got l plus one valid signatures. Um, so the user. Uh, in this attack is able to forge L plus 1 valid signatures and the fact that the user picks those coefficients is the computationally hard part of the problem. So that's what we call the ROS problem or ROS problem. And the first result of our paper uh, is that in the model algebraic group model plus random oracle model, if we use the assumption one more discrete log, which is a variant of the discrete log and the ROS problem, uh, so if those two assumptions hold, branch no is unforgeable. But um, what has been shown by Wagner in 2002 is for fixed secure parameter and L, actually, uh, the Ross problem can be solved in time and space 2 at the power of 55. So this is quite bad news for uh, the branch no signatures. Uh, the Ross problem is not that, that strong. And that's why in the paper we want, uh, we, we find a fix to uh, to to uh, Blanche North signatures, so we introduce uh, close Blanche North signatures. So remember, uh, Blanche North signatures. Um, the signer sends a random R to the user, then the user sends a challenge corresponding to R to the signer, and finally the signer answers with S. Uh, now what we will do in close Blanche North is we will do two uh, Blanche North sessions in parallel. Okay. So what the signer does is send uh, R0, R1 to the user, and then the user will compute C0 and C1. But now what the signer does is it picks a random bit and it aborts the, se the session that doesn't correspond to the bit. Okay. So it ends the session corresponding to the bit, it sends a bit to the user and sends um, the value SB that correspond to the session of the bit. To the, to the user, and the user only gets one signature in the end. Okay, so how does it prevent the previous attack? So remember, in the previous attack, the user was starting 
L uh, sessions uh, of interaction with the signer, um, getting uh, so getting L values for R, and then it was building the row IJ such that and the CI such that it ends the interaction with the signer and the row, row IJ such, such that it can um, get this decomposition for the R I star. It also gets the same decomposition for the S I star. But the problem the user will have now is for half of the RJ, the SI, the SJ here will be missing because um, the signer won't give all the SJ here. Half of the session are aborted by the signer. So in order for the user to win the game, <clears throat> when uh, is the user sees the RJ, the user must know uh, which RJ it has to use uh, to win the ROS problem, okay, to build the RI star. So it has to know uh, which, for which RJ uh, it, it will have the SJ and which for which RJ uh, the session will be aborted. So what the user must uh, guess is uh, which session will be aborted. So the more the user starts session, the more guesses he will have to do in order to uh, to deduce which session will be aborted, and so the more it will be hard for him, it is exponential exponentially hard for him to to <clears throat> to deduce uh, which session will be aborted. So that's why uh, the attack doesn't work now. Uh, in order to win this attack, the user now uh, has to um, has to win what we call a modified ROS problem, which we believe is quite more difficult. So that's the second result of our paper, which is in the same model as before, using one more discrete log assumption and the modified ROS uh, assumption, we get that closed Blanche nor is unforgeable. Um, okay. Uh, also, uh, what uh, what we can uh, say is that uh, the new scheme, the bl closed Blanche nor signature, leaves the signature uh, scheme unchanged. So that's good news because now um, new signing protocol can be dropped in, repress, in uh, replacement for existing scheme. Okay. Um, so uh, I want to discuss also further results uh, of um, the of the paper. Uh, what we show in the paper is uh, that closed Blanche nor satisfies blindness. We also show that in the algebraic uh, group model plus random oracle model. The sign del gamal is indistinguishable on the chosen ciphertext attack two under the DDH assumption, and this is a type proof. Um, we also show that signed hashed el gamal key encapsulation mechanism is indistinguishable on the chosen ciphertext attack two under the discrete log assumption, and this is a type proof. Thanks a lot for your attention. I would be happy to answer any comments or questions that you have.